Today we'll be looking at an undecidable problem for context-free grammars. In that, remember we were talking about configurations and computation histories before in the E sub LBA video. And a configuration is just an encoding of what the machine is, the Turing machine is doing at a particular time. Computation history is a sequence of those uh, configurations such that uh, the first one is the starting config, so it must be Q0 followed by W, and CI yields the next one for all I. So that means it's, uh, by yields we mean it's applying a transition. So I want to therefore talk about the universality problem for CFGs. You can talk about PDAs too, but it, it doesn't actually matter here. So let's uh, have as input a single CFG, so G is a CFG, and the language of G is everything. And we will be showing today that this is undecidable, which is kind of shocking in that the emptiness problem is decidable, but the universality problem is undecidable. So how do we actually deal with this here? So we're going to actually do something kind of similar to the ELBA video where we're going to encode all the accepting computation histories of instead of into an LBA, we're going to do it into the CFG such that uh, here the grammar is going to have uh, accept every string or be able to generate every string if the Turing machine either accepts W or it doesn't and it's going to be not sigma star in the other condition. So we're going to somehow bake the Turing machine running on that input W right into the context-free grammar. So unfortunately, we can't go straight in that direction because if we look at these computation histories, let's say it's this, and let's focus on, let's say, C1 and C2. Well, the, let's say that the tape head is near the beginning on both of them then what changes is around where the tape head is on both sides. So it's going to be near the beginning here, whatever changes, and whatever changes over here, again, it's going to be near the beginning because they're one transition apart from each other. The problem is that there's a lot of stuff in between, uh, actually, namely here. So after where the tape head is, there's a lot of stuff, then the pound sign, then the near the beginning, Here's the tape head again. And I claim that this is somewhat similar, so similar to the problem of W pound sign W. And why is that? Well, the rest of the, of the configuration on both sides is going to be exactly the same other than wherever the tape head is. And it's only a finite number of possible changes that can be made because there are only a finite number of transitions. So it's very similar to this problem um, where we have the same string on both sides of the pound sign. But uh, if you recall that this is not a context-free language, this where W is any string in, let's say, 0, 1 star. This is not a context-free language at all. So what we need to do is to have something that is better phrased for context-free grammars, and fortunately, there is another way. So we're going to be talking about reversed accepting computation histories. And what do those look like? So what we're going to do is, oops, we're going to have C0 be normal, just like before, but every other one is going to be reversed compared to the previous one. So C2 is going to be normal, C3 is going to be reversed, and then C4 goes back to normal, etc. And then let's say CM is reversed, the, the one at the very end. And why is this okay? Because, uh, again, the part where the tape head is on both sides is going to be uh, the part that changes, but everything else is going to be roughly the same, actually exactly the same. And so, uh, because of that, we're going to have something that's akin to W pound sign W reverse. 
And that is a context-free language because those are effectively palindromes. Uh, it's not here because there's going to be some changes where the tape head is, but it's very, very close to it. And in fact, we'll, we'll be able to deal with that uh, completely. Um, and this is context-free. And you may think, well, what if there's, um, what if we need to do this one right here, C1 and C2? Well, C2 is roughly the reverse of C1. And so just because there's no reversed here, as long as there's a relationship between what's happening on both sides, one is the reverse of the other one, then that's all that we need. And it's important that the context-free grammar is non-deterministic because I don't know necessarily which one of these uh, we need to investigate, so we can do it non-deterministically, which is what a context-free grammar is all about. Okay, but the way that we're going to do this is kind of, kind of striking in that we're going to have the language of the grammar be sigma star uh, if and only if uh, M does not accept W. The Turing machine M does not accept W. And how are we going to do that? So what we're going to have the language of the grammar be is all strings that are not reversed ACHs. And by ACH, I mean accepting computation history. Okay, so uh, we want every string that is not a reversed ACH. So if M does, does accept W, there is an ACH, which means there is a reversed ACH. So that means that uh, the grammar will not be sigma star uh, because there is a, a, a reversed ACH. So that means that LG does not create one string. There is a string that it doesn't make. And if M does accept W, there is no ACH, which means there is no reversed ACH. So that means that LG accepts every string, and that's how it's gonna work. So now we need to figure out how is this grammar actually made? So what does an ACH have, or I guess reversed ACH? So uh, what strings are gonna be included? So yeah, I should write that, what strings to include. And what we need this to be is we need this to be a context-free language because if it's not context-free, we can't say anything about G because it's a context-free grammar. So uh, any string uh, that has pound sign, pound sign in a row. Actually, no, that's not true. Um, I'll just do it this way. That has uh, C0 not the starting config. Okay, so it's, it, the starting one must not be the starting config. That's a, that's a possible string that we will include. And what this will be is that uh, we, we need to represent all the possible strings that could go there, which is gonna be gamma star without the string Q0, W1, up to Wn. Uh, so this is not exactly right because we have other stuff that could appear on both sides, but any string that does not uh, start with this, so basically all these strings, I guess we need to put a pound sign here and then uh, gamma star after that. And so, and, and so effectively that'll work, um, maybe a pound sign here. All of these are regular, by the way. Well, in fact, you can actually show that this is regular because this this part's regular. This is intersection with the complement of this. Well, this is a finite language, and so the complement of a finite language is regular, and the rest of this is regular, all concatenated, so it's it's regular. So this guy is regular. Uh, as any string where the last one is not accepting. Again, we're trying to figure out the conditions on where the, the reverse ACH really isn't an, a reverse ACH. So we wanna find any condition for making it an, uh, not a reverse ACH. 
So where CM is not accepting. So what are we gonna, how do we actually figure that out? Well, it's gamma star, so that's the stuff before this very last one, pound sign. And then what we need to have here is pound is uh, gamma star, followed by, uh, let's say, Q take away Q accept. And then gamma star after that. So uh, again, I'm not doing this exactly because um, there are a lot of other things we would need to handle here, but I'm just getting the idea across. So here's the state that we are in right here. Actually, I should say uh, pound sign at the end. So here this is saying that at the very end of where the input the input is, we have something that has some tape content followed by any state other than the accept one, followed by any tape content, and that's at the very end. So it's the very last configuration. And because it's the last one, it must be the accept one, but we're saying that it's not the accept one. So that's okay. And as you can clearly see that this is also regular. So I'll put reg for that. And what we finally need to do is um, sum config or I guess I'll do it this way. So any string encoding some CI not yielding CI plus one. So if there is some con is there there is some configuration that does not yield the next one, and let's say that the next one is the reverse of the original, then uh, of CI I guess then we want to have the grammar make those strengths. So what does it actually look like? So let's actually look at this. So this is C0, oh, not C0, CI, pound sign, uh, CI plus one reverse. It might be that CI is the reversed one, but as, as all that matters is the relationship between the two. One is the reverse of the other. So the rev doesn't actually mean anything here. And so let's suppose that the tape head is right here. Well, on the other side, it's going to be, if it's not near the beginning, it's near the end because it's the reverse over here. So the thing that we want to notice is that this stuff right here is the reverse of this stuff. So let's say that this is X, then this part is X reverse because the, the tape head is outside of those regions. So we can have the grammar generate all of the all of this stuff right here and actually another thing we should notice is that all of this stuff right here is also the same so let's call this y on one side and then this is y reverse on the other side because it's because it's reversed and it's not where the tape head is so what we can do is to have uh, i'm not going to write it down but the basic idea is have the start variable make these uh, spit out all the characters on both sides, so there may be stuff before and after. This is where the non-determinism comes into play. I don't know which configuration to look at. It's just going to non-deterministic, non-deterministically uh, non guess. Then, so let's say it guesses these two. Then it's going to generate the the pound signs of both ends. Then go inside one level. Then it's going to be generating the y and Y reverse on both sides, that's just palindrome. So it's spitting off the same characters one at a time and moving in. Then when we get to this point where the tape actually changes possibly from this side over to here, we bake in the transitions of the Turing machine M into the rules. And we can do that because there's only a finite number of transitions. So we only add a finite number of rules to account for all the possible changes that could occur here, legal changes that have to occur. And then we move, and then once we get past that part, we're back to palindromes again. So we can recurse on a different variable, let's say, and we have palindromes all the way through uh, to, the, to the middle here. So we're spitting off the same characters all the way through until we hit the pound sign in the middle. And that's where the context-free grammar part comes into play. Being able to figure out whether this configuration does not yield the next one. So the only possibility is 
that uh, oh another thing is if there is a difference between the characters here uh, then uh, then we will uh, have the grammar stop at that point so if there's a difference here that doesn't correspond to a change of the character under the tape head then we will have the grammar say yes on those strings if the transition does not yield the next one we'll have the grammars uh, say yes and if the if the uh, Turing machine part passed meaning that the transition was applied correctly then we need to have some character differ on both sides here because we want the grammar to generate everything that is not yielding on both sides so we want to have something that is not uh, uh, the same character on both sides and fortunately I'll leave this as an exercise that is also context free context free grammars or uh, languages are not closed under complement unfortunately but here it turns out that the complement of palindromes is context free and I want you to actually think about that so I claim therefore that this thing is a CFL and those are all the possibilities I, I mean there are a few remaining cases and I want you to actually think about them but I claim that all of them are either regular or context free so we have that uh, we want to include all of these strings so we have regular and regular and a context free language and it's fortunately the union of all three so if we have the union of a regular a regular and a context free language that yields a context free language and so uh, we will be able to make the grammar for this as a result and that effectively proves that the all problem for context free grammars is un undecidable and the reason is that let's suppose that we are given a turing machine m and w we build a context free grammar that corresponds to all strings that are not these reversed achs and that corresponds to whether or not that Turing machine accepts that input. And so if we can decide the all problem, then we can decide whether or not M accepts W. Where did I put it? Yeah, here. So we can figure out whether or not M accepts W because we're baking into this very last part, the transitions of the Turing machine M and looking at all strings that are not uh, accepting computation histories reversed yeah but they're not accepting computation histories and so we can figure out whether or not M accepts W or not if we know whether or not the grammar's language is Sigma star so hopefully that was interesting leave your thoughts about this proof down into the comments down below as always please like the video and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out there are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time